Dimension 119, a dimension where anything can happen. Prepare for the strange and unexpected. Enjoy today's episode. Well, it sounds like me. And then a nap, Derek. I didn't nap. I've, I've sat in bed doing just staring at the ceiling i can't well, sleep during the day was that after a 15 hour well 15 and a half hour shift no sorry it ended up being 11, a 17 and a half hour shift you guys done measuring your shifts no no <laughs> because it's because, never... because the night before that i only had five hours sleep after i oh i'm Y'all just need to sleep more. Yeah, exactly. Sleep more forehead. I I had to sleep at work. Um, and the girl ne- who sleeps next to the sleep room uh was just screaming and shouting all night. So what's going on, everybody? It is Nathan with Dimension 119, (laughs) and we're back at it again for Curse of Strahd, I think. Um, Although we might talk about our sleep schedules all night. We'll we'll see. Um, Yeah. Who's doing the recap? Uh, Kevin, you got it? Yeah, I've got this. I literally haven't thought about it. (laughs) (laughs) So, last week we started off preparing for another go at the fiendish old man that was running around the Amber Temple. Um, we took a quick we took a quick time just to get some flash healing in from um, the dwarves and from uh, Aurelian, I almost said then. <laughs> Good old Aurelian. <laughs> from Ordin. Um, and we attempted to make our way to the statue and we got there, but then we got attacked. Um, he, the wizardy old man that's a fiend, was not in the statue. He was actually back where we were. So um, we then tried to avoid his attacks as the skulls came and um, joined the party, I guess. Iris again managed to turn two of them away um, and we destroyed one of them before we realized actually we have to use holy water on their remains to keep them dead. And we did that thanks to Audin's pre-prepared metal bottle of water. 
Um, we then um, decided to leave the temple because we couldn't catch up to this um, this fiendish creature. And being surrounded by the skulls, it was going to be too difficult. So the party decided to leave um, exasperated, frustrated. But I guess we'd achieved what we actually originally came to achieve in regard to um, defeating Erston and putting him to rest. We left the temple. We found Caraxis, who had many nightmares when he re-entered the temple due to the fire that was being flung around. And we began our descent down the mountain. However, when we got to Selenka Pass, we came across two vampire spawn who were crossing the bridge. We quickly tried to go after them and catch them up, with Caraxis uh, being the first and ahead of everybody else. But the vampire spawn thought they were clever in climbing over the side of the bridge and beginning to descend the cliffside. Raging, we ended up granting Ordin's wish in making Ordin a flying dragon as wings, spectral wings, sprouted from Raging's back, Ordin's back, and Iris's back. And I believe that is where we are picking up. I'm not sure if I've missed anything else. I don't think so. I think that's pretty much caught up to where we're at right now. Yes, and you, you are now kind of pursuing two vampire spawn down the slopes of Mount Gakis, and Grajan has just spread out of nowhere, spread wings, and Iris and Orden have also miraculously spread wings as it is Orden's turn, and as Rajin do started diving down the mountain, um, and it's now Orden's turn. Orden is a lot clumsier with these wings because he was not expecting it, and the way he's moving is almost like he's trying to walk in the air. But he is going to attempt to dive down and get close to these guys, so I can at least get them in my sunshine. Yeah, remember they are about, I think I said 60 feet down? Yeah, um, can I dash to get there? Um, the fly speed is 60 feet, so Ooh, you, could, nice. you can dash 120 feet. No, I'll, I'll just like dive down the 60 feet so I can attack. Okay. Um, can I move myself here? Yep. Yeah, that's okay. fine. Um, how are they looking? The one on the right has been hit uh by an arrow or two because he has some damage to him. The one on the left is fine. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit them twice and I will attempt to smite um, first level if okay. I can hit this. Um, does a 13 hit? Uh, I don't know. I didn't bring up their staff box yet. Uh, I believe 15. I believe that's true. Uh, 15, yes. Okay. It's really easy, so yeah, that misses. Attack. Come on. Off to a great start. Also misses. But they are in my sunshine. So that should help a little bit. You are the sunshine. They're only sunshine. And now it is Ragnar's turn. Um, Ragnar is going to step forward and cast Guiding Bolt on the one that took damage. Okay. So, I need to make a ranged spell attack. Twenty-four to hit. That hits. Oh, wait. Hang on. I won't do that, so I'll waste that, because <laughs> um, 
I forgot I don't have any spell slots left because we didn't rest yet. <laughs> um, kind of need that. I do have a heavy crossbow though, so I'll do that. That's the one time you've ever hit anything with that guiding bolt. Yeah. I guess I will roll again. Ten to hit. That misses. All right. Um, Ragnar's just gonna begin loading another bolt. Okay, now we're uh, back up to Caraxes. And has Rajin ever flown before? I don't think you have, have you? Uh, uh, what level was Rajin when we started? Five? Six? Something like that. I, I think, think you... I, was it five? Because I know Ragnar and Derek died at four before mm -hmm. Ragnar could get second attack. So I think he started at four and then got five relatively quickly after. I think that's right because we did go to the winery. Um, no, I think Derek uh, Rochambeau was level five because he had um, Summon okay. Fag, which is level three. So a level three spell. So um, I would say... Raging has um, sprouted some wings with the spell before, but he's okay. never actually flown. Okay, but yeah, Caraxes, this is the first time you've actually seen Raging fly. You've seen him te like do some test runs with 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 the spell before, but this is the first time you've actually seen him full fledged just go. And you and you also see him. Also cast a spell on Orden and Iris, but not you. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel, <laughs> I feel a little jealous. Not gonna lie, um, but Caraxus, he would, uh, he'd look over at Ragnar, like to see what he's doing. And was like, all right, well, Ragnar doesn't have the spell either. So, um, yeah. how far away are these vampires from me? Do I need to get my Pythagorean uh, calculator back out? Probably around 80, I'd assume. <laughs> Maybe 75? I don't fucking know. Okay, I'll take it. Um, uh, so what I will do is, I guess I'm just going to make an attack, see if I can strike the same vampire that I hit earlier. Mm -hmm. um, not 11, gonna do it. An eleven does not hit. No. Yeah, weird. But uh, yeah, that'll be my turn. I get, uh, no, I'm gonna move over towards uh, Ragnar as well, just to kind of touch base with him and be like, you know, any ideas on what we should do? But he'd be whispering. Mm -hmm. Can you cast Featherfall? What? That's what I thought. No. Okay. Next up is their turn, and you, and you all have seen this before, where Orden's the 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 blade of of sun with sun, of pure sunlight shines in these spawns faces and they start uh writhing in pain as it is they have their sun their sunlight hypersensitivity um i guess they really have no choice but to fight because they ain't gonna be getting uh ah. no no they're just gonna disengage and go and just move they're they're trying to get away they're not gonna fight they're just another i imagine one of them could just dash but mm -hmm. Yeah, one of them is going to dash down the mountain again. Get Remember that's 100 a uh, 100 feet each each drop. So, he probably dashes another 60 feet down while the one engaged with uh Orden is going to make a couple attacks on him. One's uh, So much for being engaged with. Uh, plus six. Uh, 
A 24. That hits. Okay, and instead of dealing damage, he is just going to grapple you. So he is just going to grab you while still clutching to the the, the um, cliffside, and he's just going to start holding you. Um, and then I want you to make a, a, a just a pure strength check, because he's just going to jump. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you're still you're still flying, right? That's a one. Or you still have but the he's wings. Like, he's grappled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you you're not f- like levitating. You're flying, so when you fly, you can still be like tripped out of the air. I'm just thinking like. If he's if Orden has big wings coming out of his back, it's going to be difficult. But wouldn't you? If like if you were going to bear hug somebody, you're not. Uh, yeah. hmm. I think I'm not saying impossible. He could go for the front rather than the back. What would the well? How would the rule say? Because like so a gra- when you're flying and you're grappled, I believe you fall. I could be wrong on that, but I'm, I think that's how that works. Flying creature gets grappled, and then it's speed is reduced, reduced to zero, which means it can't levitate or, or I guess, yeah. uh, hold plate. So as, as I, I would see, it, what's happened is the vampire spawn has grabbed Odin's like, leg, reducing in the grapple, yeah, um, the rules reducing... Are- the rules reducing. for flying. The rules for flying declare that the creature falls in this case, because the mm-hmm. speed is reduced to zero. So, yeah, he's just going to grapple and then just fall as in you two plummet hundreds of feet to the gra- uh, to the floor. As yeah, I assume. you better not kill Gordon. <laughs> I think he might is the thing. I was not prepared for that. <laughs> He's willing to die. <laughs> He's going to be dead anyway. Might as well death True. <laughs> I mean, honestly, fair, fair move, Derek. Fair move. <laughs> uh, okay, what's uh, that looking like? D6 for every 10 feet. Uh, it maxes it, out, though. It Does it? Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, the maximum I mean, for, for is, rules is 20 D6. So that would be 200 feet. So yeah, it'd be a max of 20. So, um, <laughs> so each one of these arrows is how far, Derek? 100. 100. Oh, okay. So it, it, it'll be 20 D6. Okay. So, Roll the damage. Just, okay. a, just throwing another kink in, in things. <laughs> is that like a hill or is it just a straight up cliff? It's a straight up cliff. It, it, like it, go, it has a small incline, but each five feet is a extra 100 foot okay. down. All right. Well, I, I was just do like, just trying to like, trying to picture this in my head. Like is Orden rolling down this hill or is it yeah. literally falling? It's pretty it's much. Like, it's like an 85 degree. Mm-hmm. Incline. <laughs> um, That's nuts. What is Orden's max HP? 77. Okay. So you're, you're not going to be dead dead then. You're, you're, yeah, you're, no. uncon- you're unconscious on the ground as yeah. is. Yeah. Well, I need to check and make sure because I'm at like 35 he- um, health right now. Is that you an s- automatic death? It, no, it's got to take. It's got to take you to um, minus uh, 77. You're minus half. Minus half. Then that I would be 38.5. Mm-hmm. Yeah, minus half is dead. Dead. No saves. I, I thought it was your full. Uh, I could be wrong. I think it's your full health. I think. And you, you Ooh, die yeah. if you die if the remaining damage equals or exceeds your hit point maximum. Okay. 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 Oh really? Oh, thank okay. goodness. So Dude, it's impossible to fucking die straight out. At high level, quite. At, at a low, quite. well, if you're level, you can level one guiding bolt somebody and they're dead, dead. I mean, I guess, yeah. <laughs> um, but so as we're falling, um, 
Arden is just going to instinctively reach up to try to grab towards <laughs> Iris and just like hits the ground really hard and is immediately knocked out. As this just one little, is just is now dead. <laughs> just a little cartoon puddle on the ground. As Orden is now 500 feet below you. <laughs> Can you guys even get down there? <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. They have a day to revivify you. <laughs> Do they? I was always under the assumption that revivify was like five minutes. Pretty well, sure. you're just unconscious, too. You're not dead yet. That's true. You still have to roll saves. I'm not dead oh, yet. Oh, yeah. You typed a creature that has died in the last minute. Yeah, oh, that's what I heard about. You got a minute to get to him. <laughs> well, you better make your saves, Ray. Yeah. Well, do I have to make a save right now? No, no, it'll be okay. on your turn. Okay. Cool. As it is now Iris's turn, as you just see Orden and this vampire spawn plummet to the to, to the valley below. Iris is going to um tuck those wings. Like she's not used to flying obviously but for some reason like this this hyper focuses her and she tucks those wings expertly and goes launching down um launches down 60 feet so however far you, you could dash can to, you can dash to 120 i mean oh. Derek. i mean technically iris could just fall technically yes that sounds and dangerous then, and then you have wings so if you're acrobatic or or skilled don't, enough you could make a it. check to stop yourself before you fall, hit the ground it's too risky don't do it you're our healer well i wasn't planning on doing it i was just waiting for them to to get done yeah um <laughs> she's going to tuck the wings uh pretty expertly go diving down the 60 feet and then she's going to flip them back open um once she's reached that distance and that would put would that put the other vampire spawn within 120 feet yes um as she's die bombing down towards this thing um and like looking over at orton she's gonna let out this shrill cry um just this blood curdling blood freezing scream um take out a small stone and throw it towards this other vampire spawn and as it hits the ground, a ring of fire will appear around it. Um, it's 20 feet high. It is a foot thick. Um, or it's 20 feet in diameter and 20 feet high. And it is a foot thick around this vampire spawn, enclosing it um, in these flames. You said 20 feet? Yes. Uh, diameter. Okay, let me do the radius. 20 feet. Everybody can see. Save. Boom. <laughs> now this yeah. says that um, a creature within its area must make a dexterity saving throw, and I'm assuming that means if it's in the fire, because it is a is that... wall of fire. It's not. Yeah. It's not a twenty foot circle of fire. So if it tries to get out of that area of fire and has to go through that 20 foot tall wall of fire during that it will take uh, a lot of damage mm -hmm. um, and that will Iris will try to maintain concentration of, on that and it will last up to a minute if she does and that will be her turn I can't hear. Anyone. Yeah. I think Derek fell asleep. I think so. Derek, are you awake? <laughs> well, we beat Strahd. We right, did it. So who's running the rest of the session? Uh, Kevin. <laughs> um, so Raging's going to fly down. Uh, so, if it goes through this ring of fire, it takes damage. 
Uh, yes. Okay. Raging. Well, is... it'll make a deck save and then take damage. Can Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Hey, there you are. I don't know what the hell happened, but okay. So there's the wall of fire there. If they if that spawn tries to leave that wall, he has to make a deck save, or does he have to do it now? No, if he tries to leave that wall, and I mean, if he can't jump, if if he can't jump a, a twenty foot wall, then yeah, he'll have and he has to go through the fire. Then he'll have to make a deck save. Okay. And then well, on, I'm so, assuming then... that's what that I'm assuming that's what that means. It says you create a wall of fire. On a solid surface within range, you can make the wall up to 60 feet long or 20 feet high and one foot thick, or ringed wall up to 20 feet in diameter, um, 20 feet high and one foot thick. The wall is opaque and lasts for the duration. I can make, actually, I can make that so smaller. Would I that help a, if we made it smaller? Probably. I got a question real quick. Uh, so you have the wall of fire on a damn near vertical wall. Would that just mean that? <laughs> You gotta. Excuse me. Yeah, he could just oh, horizontally you, I, jump. I'm sneezy. I'm sneezy well, telepathically. Yeah, I'm sneezing telepathically. Um, what if the flames just go up? So it would consume just about everything in that 20 foot circle. Yeah. Um, or flames just shooting straight, straight out. Up. Oh, they're up. <laughs> yeah, like I feel like they're going up. Oh, yeah, they're like, definitely out. going up. So, like. That motherfucker's in the fire, and he's okay. got twenty foot of fire all around him too. Yeah, he's got a okay, okay. Well, I don't think he's. Sense? I don't think he's in the flames. I think it's literally, as far as I'm understanding, it's literally a wall of fire. Well, so yeah, but... yeah the, the fire would be protruding. Like, say you're on a freaking hundred. Yeah, it's, it's shooting straight up in the air at the outside of that ring. Okay, so right. as I see, this is the cliff. Right, the vampire is here, right? The ring of fire would be around it like this. Yeah. With the flames doing this. So Yeah, is the flames going straight out horizontally? Or would they because they're fire, they'd be going forward. He I mean, I guess maybe he's in like a bubble of fire, is what my thinking would be. Is it is it the X or the Y axis? Yeah, that's what we're looking at here. Yeah, no, okay. it's it's a wall of fire around him. Like, it's basically like I'm keeping him in this twenty foot area. So that doesn't answer our question. Okay, like, let me um, let me try and help the situation then. So yeah, go for it because I'm not sure I understand what the question <laughs> is. Then if he if he gets knocked off the wall, he's gonna pass through your fire, right? Yes, and he's gonna fall. Yeah. How many feet? It, another 200, two, 300 feet. Okay, which is like 20d6 plus the ring of fire mm -hmm. damage. Okay. So, this is what I'm saying. So, like, if the wall of fire was on a horizontal Here, I'm area, post, it'd be I'm like posting, this. If I'm it's posting on a, a wall, it would still be posting up this way here, right? So the flames just consume that whole area because it's on a nearly vertical angle. Yeah, I see what Nate's saying. So he yeah, that, that that's what I was thinking too. Like, does it does it too. like does it just instantly become a a complete circle of fire, or is the the since it's a spell, it just protrudes out of the wall? Right. <laughs> I guess like that's, a jet engine. <laughs> I guess that's <laughs> I guess that's like Derek. Derek's interpretation of it because like, I'm like, it, like I'm looking at a 2D over. map thinking you know I'm thinking 2D map you know just thinking it's a circle mm -hmm. of fire but in reality this cliff is super steep so yeah yeah it's like it does it continue to rise like it wouldn't actually or does it protrude out of the wall <laughs> I mean that's that's a, that's a Derek call I'm sorry to drag that all out but like I felt it, like that was pertinent it, information it, like it's a legitimate scientific mm -hmm. question. <laughs> But yeah, I would, wants to bring science into it. I, I would feel like it would be a an, an, an enclosed circle. He's like, fuck in this moment. I, I guess the enclosed, yeah. I don't imagine that at like right now that he's in the fire if we're going that way because it is like unless we are unless Derek allows me to retcon it and say it's smaller. Because I was thinking it just had to be twenty, but it's up to twenty. 
so i don't imagine he's actually in it now because you know it's way out there in the water but well it has to end actually it has to end at least where the ground is if you wanted has to, to be a if you wanted solid to make surface the, make it smaller to enclose them a little more since you didn't fully read the spell you, you go for it yeah if i would probably probably keep it like keep orden out of it because that was Please that's don't. kind of the goal is to not have Horden in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah, but again, like the the fire's nowhere near the ground, right? Because this is what however many feet up in the air. You said mm-hmm. three hundred feet up in the air, four hundred feet up in the air. Right. Yeah. So it's not going to get to the ground anyway. But yeah. Well, the okay. fire has just, to be. He's, he's the fire has to be along the, the ground. Like, if he move, if he moves, he 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 takes, he makes his check. <laughs> I feel like we need to have like a scientific, um, like experiment we need, now. We to need test uh, this. we need Bill Nye. We need we, Mythbusters Ray, in here. We do not support forest fires, Ray. <laughs> and we do not need Bill Nye of all people. Okay, what does, that, what, what, what does Ray Shin do? Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, Ragin flies down to 15 feet and positions himself seeing this wall of fire uh, erupt out of, well, Iris erupt this, like, fire out of the cliffside. He's going to fly down and seeing um, Iris is forth with this fire and seeing Audin just plummet to the ground as well and looks very unconscious. And seeing that the vampire spawn also is very hurt um, or dead. Uh, Raging's gonna uh, create this whip of lightning uh, which crackles down his arm right and spills out and he reels it back a bit like the Balrog with his Mm -hmm. fire whip and he's gonna fire it out this whip of lightning it's gonna wrap around the vampire spawn and he's gonna try and tug the vampire spawn off the wall 15 feet towards him um, through the flames and then Obviously, he's just going to fall. Would you say it's through the fire and the flames? (laughs) Yeah, both. So he has to make a strength save? He does. He does not. Oh, that's rad as hell, Kevin. So super awesome. (laughs) That's why I was just like, okay, regardless of what this wall of fire looks like, if Raging just pulls him (laughs) off the, the side and... He, he's going to come through the fire. He's going to then plummet and take the 20d6 again. Okay, so he takes 10 from the lightning itself, correct? Uh, Yes. Okay, and then he takes... Uh, when... Blo- for bludgeoning resistances, does that also include falling for bludgeoning damage, or is this... Or, or is, okay, so it'd be half of... That. We we dealt with this when somebody when somebody fell off the stage when Rajin was battling them. It was a werewolf, and they were completely resistant to it. Like they okay. didn't take any so damage. Be, okay. So it would be thirty nine. <laughs> yep. Boom! He, and he just hits the ground. Like you can just see him like arch his back up as the. His, just all of his the breath inside of him just uh, comes out of him. Go ahead. Oh yeah, the fire, the fire damage. Hold ones, on. but he has I to just need to work out how far away I would have been because I would have been fifteen feet from uh from him. <laughs> yeah. So, how, what's the save to make for the wall uh, of fire? He needs to make a dex save. Uh, 21. Uh, now, Derek, let's throw some more science out there. Right. If I've pulled this vampire off from this position here. Nope. Mm-hmm. Right. Then his momentum would have been taken in this way, correct? Right. So he's not going to go this and then fall straight. He's going to kind of arc like this, right? 
Is right. That correct? So, in fact, this vampire would have actually fallen beneath raging into the river. Okay, and he's technically he's dead because he can't <laughs> do anything. So, I'm sure he's now in the river being washed away. He would have and taken 15 fire damage, by the way. Oh, he would have been dead anyway. <laughs> well, some, there's something with water and vampires, I'm sure. Yeah, well, they can't cross. Uh, I think... Um, but they're, they are harmed but, by running water. Yeah. This is pretty like, running water. Like uh, poison damage. And that will be Raging's turn anyway. And you are now out of combat. Do you guys know in Zombieland how there's like the zombie kill of the year? That was that was the vampire kill of the year. <laughs> um, before we continue on, I need to um, give a couple shout outs. One uh, is to Jeremy from Erasmus Expeditions. Um, great friend, good friend of the channel. And he's got several things um, on drive through RPG, R- drive through RPG right now um that are fantastic some one page rule sets um he's got some uh, combat trackers he's got some stat block uh, pages and he's got a couple of critical hit tables um which are all fantastic i grabbed all of those just the other day um his youtube link is in the channel there in the chat and uh his content is amazing yeah nate uh, that was the wrong one but yeah i got you bud <laughs> His content is amazing on YouTube. Um, if you're not following him, you definitely should be. Uh, he's got a great podcast that he does on there, as well as the games that he runs. Um, and then the other the other is some dude named Jarl of Goats. Um, yeah, it's not much to note on his channel, except for the fact that normally um, after this game, I'm over there for Death of Deities, you know, trying to bring him some viewers. But uh, we're not doing that tonight. We'll be doing that again next week. Uh, so you can... Show him some love next week when I'm over there. Anyways, continue on. But yes, you are now out of combat. And Orton, just for the hell of it, since they are not going to get to you right away, make a dust save for me. Cool. Is that just a straight D20? Yep. Three. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and you guys have You'll get there. You can get easily get there within a minute. So, do what you do. Well, um, well, let, let's see what Iris does and how Iris gets there. She just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, Iris's next turn was going to be to uh, do exactly what y'all were talking about before and just fold those wings back and just drop down towards Orden and try to you know, put them out right before she hits the ground and slow her fall so that she can help Orden. Make an acrobatics check to be able to do that. Thank you. Eight. Um, what would you do in that situation, Kevin? <laughs> um, half damage. So would be from falling because he's still going to try and he's still controlling the fall. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't be the full twenty like he would. How far above the ground would Iris try to open her wings? I mean, it'd be pretty close to the ground, but it she, she's not being super rational, but, like, maybe 20 feet. Something that she's pretty sure is not going to kill her if she starts to, you know, if she doesn't make it. But she's only got 120 feet to get down there, so... Oops, didn't it not that will take seventeen points of fall damage. Since you still have the momentum of falling, you you slowed yourself down enough 
but yeah. Um. Yeah, um, I think uh, Raging's plan was to do the same thing. Um, to kind of tuck the wings in, tumble, uh, braces fall, um, using the wings right at the end. Do you want me to make acrobatics as well? Yes, please. <clears throat> oh, you're good. You, you've never fully flown before, but you're good. You know Super what you're hero. doing. Superhero London. Thanks for showing me up, Kevin. That's what you get for listening to Kevin when I keep saying, Nathan, don't do that. You're going to die. Shut up. You're dying. Yeah. I know all about dying. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Um, Iris would... Uh, start casting healing word then if if uh if we i mean if we're out of combat and we're just doing whatever whenever you still have spell slots <laughs> iris does I know, you, I know you don't on ragnar <laughs> okay hey iris uh, has got a good amount of spare spell slots she didn't uh she didn't fight last time remember true does a uh, raging take any damage no, you're good. You 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 opened your wings. You don't even hit the ground. Cool. Means fly is still active, and on Odin as well. Oh, is that is fly still active on me? Yeah, it's yeah. concentration based for region. I would think that like me hitting the ground in Mach five would like knock it off or something. Uh, I would, Derek. I'd probably take if the vampire spawns broken body still here. I would mm -hmm. just take it and toss it into the river. Fair. All right. So, so Iris, go ahead and so heal, Lord. Please. I'm going to cast that at level five. Because Iris is freaking out. So that's going to be... Uh... 5d4 plus 7 20 HP. And I went down to 0, right? Like, you guys don't do negatives, right? Yeah, you're at oh, 0. That so should you, be 21. You, 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 Sorry. You're, you're up to 21. Perfect. Orden just kind of stirs and he peeks his eyes open. Uh, morning, Iris. And he's gonna look it's over like, at Raijin. It's like, and you fully remember the fall. You know, you know, you remember everything until oh, you yeah. hit the ground. And he's gonna look at Raijin. Raijin, I don't think flying is for me. It's okay. But you'll you'll get the hang of it, Diego. Well. As Raijin, as Raijin, as uh, Iris just flaps those wings and flies back up onto the bridge. Um, I think raging because I guess Iris didn't say that she helped Orden up. Just reach a clawed hand out and help him up onto his feet. It is a dream for all dragon kind to fly like the great masters. Yeah, well, it's a nightmare to fall. That's all I'm saying. Then don't fall. And he takes off. <laughs> great advice and he's gonna very carefully like he's flapping way more than he probably should just to make sure he doesn't fall he's gonna get back like, up here like doggy paddling yes exactly <laughs> but with wings <laughs> like, he, wings are going and his arms and legs are also oh, yes absolutely <laughs> he's just windmilling it <laughs> very good master what is that? Praxis, speak up. <clears throat> Very good, Master. I, you did wonder, Paul. I cannot hear what you're saying. Ragnar speaks Karaxis on the back. You think you've got something stuck in your throat? 
and he would say, um, "I'll just, I'll just write him a note later." <laughs> uh, oh, you can write. That's a surprise. <laughs> He's slightly offended by that, but also he gets it. <laughs> um, Master has given Craxus a pen. <laughs> Uh, now, Craxus will... is a free cobalt. <laughs> <laughs> Raging will reach down and grab um, Craxus like by his clothing from behind, and he'll he take off. His... No, no, we don't. That's oh. the loincloth. We've been through this, Kevin. <laughs> is it just the loincloth? Or is he... Yes, we established. Oh, that. yeah, yeah. He took off his uh, his mink coat because he's warm now. Yeah, he's stripped. Well... But what about his like leather armor? What's he never, I've never had leather, leather armor. armor? I've been never wanting had... it this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I ha- I have leather skin. <laughs> okay, he's gonna grab some gnarled level skin beneath your yeah. sort of yeah, he's just trapped here. <laughs> he right? his haunches. And he'll he'll say, "Come, we must scout the towers." And uh, upsies. Upsies. And he'll uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he'll he'll take off with Caraxis this way. Um and the whole time Caraxis is like that kid in the never ending story. He's just like Yeah, yeah! <laughs> more like more like Yeah <laughs> So for anybody that doesn't know, um Caraxus can't speak above a whisper anymore because he decided to take power from the Amber Temple, and that was one of the costs of the powers that he can't speak above a whisper. He decided to accept a gift of power. He didn't take anything. Yeah, what gift do you know that takes something away from you? Anything worth having in life, Ray, comes at a cost. Truer words have never been spoken by such a kobold. Mm-hmm. He's wise. <laughs> he just read a book. He's got he's zero got, with wisdom now. He's got, exactly. He just spent two days poring over this book. Okay, so what are you guys doing? Well, Caraxus is being carried. Um, Raging's just going to fly down towards the tower. Um, scouting to see if there's any more vampires spawn about. Um, just checking mm-hmm. the tower out. Maybe do a loop around the tower. Do a flyby. Um, see the snow maidens on the roof of the tower. Yep. How long um, do these wings last? Uh, I think it's like a minute. Uh, no, it's quite, it's not a minute. It's like is it? It's over ten minutes or an hour. Uh, I'll post it. Sorry, you can tell. Just wondering, like, if Ordem could pick up Ragnar and we could just fly up to ten minutes. Uh, that's a good idea. I'll pick if, up Ragnar. Like, fly as far as we can towards our next destination. Um, he just scoops Ragnar up in a bridal carrying oh. position and is carrying him. <laughs> he didn't even ask permission first. Gordon doesn't have to ask Ragnar for permission. He knows what <laughs> Ragnar wants. <laughs> um, I guess seeing the rest of the group fly and catch up, um, he would say, the tower may be the best place to rest to stay out of the cold if we're sure that we're free right now then let's do it um Derek can I make a perception check to see if anything's around here because I want to scout too of course you can and since uh Rajin was scouting and looking around he can do it too the 
Kevin, you can make a perception check since you were scouting around the tower and such. Oh, I'm not, Caraxes is. Oh, so you're just I'm, flying. You're not looking. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm flying around, making sure I know where I'm going. Caraxes is the one that's looking around. <clears throat> you guys were so... You guys were a little too uh, high off the ground as you're flying around. You guys don't see any tracks, any signs of life anywhere. Correct. This wasn't actually looking. He was just enjoying flight. He was looking at Ray Jin. Yeah, I imagine he he would do like Cone of Cold out of his hands a couple times to kind of feel like an ice dragon. Oh. So he was he was purely having fun. He forgot to, he forgot. To look. I don't see anything. Caraxes, do you see anything from up here? <laughs> <laughs> Is what right. is what you would hear. He's just like doing the breath thing where he's like ah, to see like his breath come out all smoky. <laughs> yeah, he eventually he just like gives you a thumbs up. And plan is to rest in the tower again for the night. Yeah, if it all looks uh safe. He'll uh, drop down mm -hmm. um, and check the check inside. Yeah, probably you listen first. He would probably listen uh, first of all. In fact, I could have probably even looked through the windows um, as we flew around. If you look through the windows, you wouldn't see any signs of of life inside the building or inside the tower. You wouldn't even see any signs of um, recent of uh, travels, other than what you left behind. I'll go ahead and go inside. I'll set Redner down first, and then I'll go inside. Fly us up to that Perfect. middle level. There's a okay. big hole in the wall. All right, I'll fly us yeah, up there. That's <laughs> um, that dire, that dire wolf still there? Well, its head. No, it's on, on Ragnar. It. Its head's on Ragnar's head. But we still got a bunch of meat. We could fry that up. You sound so uh, it, redneck. Wasn't it just a? Uh, it was just a the head. head. Yeah, it was a mounted head. Wow. And now the head is mounted on Ragnar. <laughs> It usually is. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Alright, so are we taking a long rest here or trying to? Yes, please. That's the plan. Sure like to take a long rest. Um, sure like Karaxis would, uh, would offer to take uh would offer to take first watch. I can take second watch after I get some rest. Orden, you're not taking second watch. <laughs> All right. You are hurt more than anyone. You're right, the I'll one that needs the most rest. Okay, I'll take the last rest. Or the last watch. That, that works better. Um, Iris will probably take second watch. Um, Raging is okay to take any watch, uh, even multiple watches. Uh, Raging doesn't need much rest. All right, Derek, go ahead and roll on that random encounter table. No, yeah, he's absolutely right. using. Already did. You you get your full rest. Um, you all you, you all huddle together to, to conserve body heat since nobody lit a fire. So it's not comfortable rest, but you get you get your long rest to regain all your health and whatnot. 
whenever we're all woken up, I will point out, you know, we have that gym that the Mardikovs wanted. I think it'd be a good idea to drop that off before we head to Castle Ravenloft. That would make sense. I don't know what help they could be, but they gave they gave Larenthar a special bow. Maybe they can give us something. Very well. Yeah, Nathan just left. Yeah, it's like a quarter of the party right there. <laughs> How dare you make me read and see if they give you anything? Um, you know, life is so hard for Derek. It's so difficult. He has to read. <laughs> they don't teach that in Florida. When I'm trying to, they legit my... don't. True. Uh, Wait, Nathan... what are you eating? Uh, stir fry. Ah, uh, it is noodles. I I guess it was noodles. <laughs> Nathan, we were just saying that we should go to the Mardikovs to drop off the gym. Yep, that's, uh, I mean, I thought that was the plan off stream already, so yeah. It was, but I wanted to make it in stream. Yeah, Iris and Ragnar are cool with that. Do we go back to Van Richten's Tower to get Esmeralda? Or do you think we can take Strahd by ourselves? Do we want to take the chance of getting someone else killed if we fail? Thing is, we don't know Esmeralda, Esmeralda very well. Uh, exactly. You know, I, don't, I don't know if Nate's met her. I think the last time we went to the tower, everybody else stayed outside. So probably I so. not. I think you were the only one that went up. Probably, but at least Iris Ragnar and Rajin know who she is. Well, maybe not Ragnar, but still. Yeah, because Ragnar was dead at that time. Mm-hmm. So I think we go drop the gym <laughs> off and then um, I guess we can have a discussion about the other. But I think our first step is uh, going back to the winery and getting some uh, champagne do let's not. <laughs> yeah, we can have a night of drinking before we go kill Strahd. It'll be the calm before the storm. Mm-hmm. Derek, can you put us on the world map yet? I have not, but I can. And this map is huge. You're now on the... Actually, you're over here now. <laughs> and the winery is right there. Can we just... I don't think it would let us uh, cut through the trees right here. I mean, it's probably like 100 foot in the air Look, if we look at these arrows. That's true. Um, but then Raging could just catch, cast Fly. Um, on most of us. He cast it on the Caraxes this time because it's his turn. The Caraxes can't carry anyone. That's true. Yeah, Caraxes can't, can't be doing that. You can't give this man the power of flight. Uh, yes. He'll squander that power. <laughs> With great power comes great responsibility. And he is not responsible. Yeah. <laughs> no, thing is, Caraxes can't concentrate on flying and cast Cone of Cold at the same time. So he'd just fall like every few <laughs> seconds when he tried to cast Cone of Cold. True. Into the Cone of Cold. Oh, okay. Into the Cone of Cold. Yeah. But it's okay because he's super cool with the chili. <laughs> So 
so to the winery we go. Yes, please. It sounds like no one's there. The mask guys have gone. Oops, I was still <laughs> muted. Are you flying <laughs> or are you just walking? We can't fly. That takes forever. It only lets you go for 10 minutes. But if we can cut out this corner here, Derek. Like. Right. Mm, that's okay. nice. So you get one random encounter then. Okie dokie. I can do that. Possibly. I mean, we are flying over the trees. It doesn't mean you don't get the encounter. You can just. Well, that you're just still walking half the way. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Uh, can't wait to get that rusty bear trap or whatever. <laughs> and about here, since I assume you're following the tree tree line, oh, I don't even know where the road really goes. It doesn't really help. It's probably there. Yeah, didn't you erase the road? Yep. Yeah, I did. Shut up. <laughs> Where's the road? Road. Road. <laughs> At least Eric got my SpongeBob uh, reference. Oh, I heard it. We got it. We just didn't laugh. There's a difference. It means you didn't get it because it was hilarious. You get about halfway down the path, or down the path, as you're starting to climb down the uh, Mount Gakis, and about a hundred feet in front of you, uh, a barrel, baleful apparition appears before you. Its hollow eyes dark with anger. Do you guys want me to go talk to it? And it's in your in your it's in in the middle of the road. Last time I talked to a hateful apparition, I actually got somewhere. Only the other of us are going to be able to do anything as far as talking goes. So if we want to talk, you better go first. Okay. Um I will walk up to this thing completely non-threatening and just extend an arm. Hello, good sir. And smile. Graxus would like to follow you. Un momento. Um... And I don't, I don't know if this will do anything, but I haven't gotten to use it at all. I have a trait as part of my background, rustic hospitality, where um, common folk feel at ease around me. <coughs> you start walking. Towards Ray, this is a ghost. I don't <laughs> think it's a common folk. You don't know Sorry, that. It's a, it's a ghost in Barovia, so you start, like you start. Very common. You both you both start walking towards this apparition, and you get probably within ten feet of you, and you just hear it. It hiss. No one will ever know you died here, and it goes in and kind of flies into Seraxis. Uh, needs Seraxis to make a charisma saving throw. <laughs> Oh. oh no. Good thing I'm right next to you. Good thing you followed I... Orden. Yeah. No, you get a plus oh, four. Man. It's fine. Yeah. I'm not worried about it. What's the worst that could happen? You're charismatic, right? I'm sure Karaxis has a great charisma. 16. It doesn't even say what the DC of a stupid possession is. Oh, 13. Okay. You're good. <laughs> yeah. You, you you feel this go this, this apparition um like kind of take up the same space as you it, it goes inside of you as it you, and you can try to feel you feel it trying to take hold of you but you just shake your head a little bit and remember that you only follow the orders of Rajin and you just kick it out plus and, it's yeah. Yeah. it's not <laughs> yeah the um yeah corrects us he looks at it and goes that was Weird. What are you doing, dude? Um, but it's I, all in a whisper. Can I kind of call him? Go for it. <laughs> Why do I kind of call him? sneezes. Yeah. <laughs> you said the little... Oh, yeah. What's your 
does it have to do? I think it's an attack spell. I've never used this. I guess I have. Um, well, you've, used it, like you've used it a bunch. <laughs> I've used it once. Um, yeah, it's a, it's well, a constitution it saving spell. in the air. <laughs> oh well, yeah, but like that's kind of far around. Uh, yeah, Constitution saving throw. Uh, uh, DC. Donde está mi DC? Uh, DC thirteen. It's all right. It it, it, it failed. <laughs> it failed. Oh instantly. my goodness! So that's eight D eight. That's forty three damage. Goodness. There you can a... just do that at will? I guess that from what Derek said. I can just have this now. That's the thing that I can do. Um, so yeah, this this uh this avarition tries to take hold of me and he like steps back and gets all weirded out and then sneezes uh this cone of cold on this uh on this ghost. What happens to him? There, it, there's a ghost no more. It, 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 it even though it's a uh, an apparition and it doesn't have a physical form, you see it kind of still freeze as it and then disappear as <laughs> you killed it. <laughs> yeah, Crex is like uh, kind of rubs his nose a little bit. That was weird. Good job, Caraxes. You too really confused at why he did a good job. As you now get over here and fly over the woods and to the winery. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Derek's sitting there like, that's why I don't do random encounters. Yeah, literally. <laughs> the random encounters late game in, in the module are stupid anyway. That's what you homebrew for. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> Sounds like work. I already gave you a a, 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 I, a random encounter I created, and Orden fell off a cliff because of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, did you create that? Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> in the book. <laughs> That's sure the best one we've had it. all campaign. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that was, that was really good. I thought that was written. Okay, so yeah, you get back to the... If you fly and land at the winery. I'm not even... Do you want me to bring you in there? Because well, it's pretty much just going to be role playing. <laughs> it's fine. I'd um, like to be. Too oh, bad. Has... Can I search the area for a dead lady? What dead lady? I don't know. I uh, <laughs> a little voice told me I think there is a dead lady in here. What? I'm looking at it right at the map. Oh. What? Zoom in. <laughs> Zoom into where? Zoom into the winery. <laughs> what? Tyler must. That must be something left over from Tyler. Tyler's presence still remains. He's still here. Oh, I think a. Dead What's the context? There? I don't, don't even fucking know. <laughs> oh my god! There's so many treasures on the map. <laughs> Are they still there? <laughs> No, not all of them. These are new treasures. Just bite me. Tyler comes in. Tyler came in like after the stream one day when we were left on the big map and just typed a bunch of stuff. Out. I just see one that says not Ohio. <laughs> yeah, I saw <laughs> I'm glad that bastard's gone. <laughs> poor, uh, he's, the best. he's gonna come back and Soul's gonna be dead. Soul's already dead. He's gonna come back and the campaign's gonna be over and we're gonna be That's halfway true. through Middle Earth. That's true. And he'll be like, hey guys, where's my character? Oh, he's he went to the Undying Lands. That's cool. Well, the thing is, before he left, he took those four potions of invulnerability yes. with him. Oh, yeah. And, and the, the, that scroll. To and the fair, scroll, no yeah. It. Well, either way. So what are we so, doing yeah. at this winery? We're returning you, a gem. We get back to the winery and you see uh it is Damien's the leader, right? Uh there's the head 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 Martikov, right? Uh Hold on. Yeah, Davian. Um Davian is out in one of the grape fields 
I'm doing some farming. <laughs> as he is farming some grapes for some wine. And he sees you fly in. And he, he just starts waving at you in the distance. <laughs> as I like he how he sees us. Right. He, he sees he, he sees a red dra- in a black dragonborn. He knows he there's he has to be you. <laughs> he just sees us flying in. He's like, oh yeah, that's normal. Anything's normal in Barovia. It's always something different with these guys. I will wave back to him. I mean, <laughs> in reality, us flying in is not the weirdest thing that we've that's happened here. We did hide a dead body at this place for a while. Oh, that's right. We had so, two. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so some of us having Definitely wings and flying in is not. No, it's gone. They were resurrected. We we brought both of those dead bodies back to life. We just stored them here for a little while. Mm-hmm. Did we even <laughs> tell them why we were doing that or that we were doing that? I think we just told them we got to store something. And they were like, yeah, that's fine. No mm-hmm. questions asked. I'm pretty sure we asked him about it, but I I don't remember for sure. Um, I will land pretty close to Davian. And I imagine we just have the gym and we hand it back to them. And he he looks at you bright eyed. Where in God's or not God, but where in Satan's great great earth. <laughs> <laughs> Where in Strahd's name did you find this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same where, canon. Where in, in in all of creation did you find this? We we, we thought it was it was, it was gone for forever. Well, a former friend of ours had it, and see, well, it didn't belong to him, so we just brought it back to you. That doesn't explain anything. That's the best I got, man. <laughs> I we we are, are my my family and all of Brovi are forever in your debt. Uh, we can now start production of uh, the Champagne du Lestomp. <laughs> oh. it has to be has to be French. <laughs> For this very Transylvanian inspired adventure. Yeah, so, you, you, you do can we get see, the like, first bottle? He, of course you do. But you see the, the excitement in this this old man's um face. He hasn't like he hasn't had the family hasn't had possession of all three of their um wine making gems for, for for a decade. So the this one in particular has been lost for 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 ten years. So. Um, I will put my hand on his shoulder if everything goes according to the plan then it's very possible that you all will everyone in Barovia will have a lot to celebrate soon and I hope that this wine will help make it a little bit easier to transition it's easier to transition to new changes whenever you're drunk I don't know what you're talking about I'm always drunk <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like, yeah, he would respond with uh, yes celebration hopefully will come sooner rather than later uh, well you're celebrating take it from someone who's lost family recently talk to your son it's not worth what's going on it's not worth what you lost talk to him if it's worth anything he didn't steal it he actually helped us out quite a bit when we were in Balaki. he's taking good care of one of our friends i'm trying to look up that that son's name uh Uh, adrian okay erwin no erwin erwin oh is it my bad my name is erwin uh then Yes, yes. I I will have to reconcile with 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 Erwin. Uh, it has been a rather long time since we have last spoken uh, in person. We still have because the, they still have dealings with each other because uh, uh, Davian still supplies 
phallic-y with the the wine, but they don't have a personal connection. So he is he's definitely uh, in in the near future gonna take a trip to Valaki and reconcile with his son. It's uh, just business. It's just business. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna he he's gonna look around. I don't have. I don't know how I can repay you guys, you all. There's that I wasn't prepared for to to actually have all three gems returned. I was already in your debt for just the return of of the first two. Well, it sounds like maybe sampling that wine would be a pretty good first start. You've done enough for us already. You helped us with the problem not too long ago. That's how we got my brother back. I think... I think Orden is right, dearie. Just a, a taste of that champagne and and we'll all be even and square. Ah, yes, you, you, you all will be the first to try it once it's ready. How long does it take to make wine? Uh, like three days. Two days? An hour? What? I mean... <laughs> that sounds about right, honestly. I mean, they're using magic gems to help yeah. make this stuff, so... It, 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 it's still gotta be made, and then the wine has to ferment. We are Derek, did we mention the magic. magic gems they're using? Yes, but do you remember the six giant freaking wine ferment barrel thingies that were in the in in the, in this place but derek <laughs> I, i'm pretty certain wine also needs sunlight and there isn't <laughs> a lot of that in barovia uh, ah. <laughs> they're just like hey Orden, can you stir this wine with your sword <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> I, I find my new life's purpose in being a winery man. Orton's like, you guys can go kill Strahd. I'm going to make wine for the rest of my life. And he would uh, offer you or motion to you all. You are more than welcome to stay to stay the night. I'm sure you've you, you, you've been on a, a great journey as of late as it has been. Uh, how long has it been since you were here? It, a uh, while a couple at least a couple of days a few days <laughs> so i'm sure you i'm sure you're all very very tired from your travels um please please come in the the family would love to to all thank you um all together actually we just had a rest not to and i imagine someone probably that, that was like probably sh like shuts that Orton was, up i mean that was uh, still Ragnar probably up. 2 days ago cuz it takes a the journey along Salinka Pass takes a couple of days. And I imagine we don't want to turn down like a warm bed. That's why I imagine like, no matter how long it took, somebody probably shut Ragnar's mouth at that point and just was like, mm -mm. <laughs> even if it was Iris, someone shut Ragnar's mouth. <laughs> I was going to say Iris is not the one saying that. And during probably dinner around dinner time, uh, Davian would would ask you all. So, uh, what what are the plans for the future? But tell me all about your event, your your recent findings and in, in fight against uh, the the Lord of the Lord Strahd. What what have you come across? What advantages do you have against him that you didn't have previously? Um, Raging just slaps um, Caraxis on the back a little bit too hard and like a, a breath of cold freezes his food. Well, that's new. <laughs> Indeed. Um, I don't think I had this when we last came here and I will pull out my sword and light it up I, if there's any kids, I imagine I'm really I'm showing it off how cool it is to them. And Sir Axis just goes, ah! Yeah. 
<laughs> By the way, Nathan, you're muted. <laughs> oh, I, I just laughed, but yeah, Praxis in this time would probably be trying to, to scry on uh, Strahd. Uh, you, you you get yourself off on your own for for about ten minutes, and you start to use the scry. Um, so he has to make a uh... We never established this. How familiar is Caraxus with Strahd? That's a wisdom I think you're very He has to make a well, wisdom. So did, they're they're not. Did we familiar. ever figure out? You have met we... him. But you're not familiar. Did sorry, I gotta move rooms real quick. Um, did we ever figure out if if we so that arrow that I shot into the vampire spawn mm -mm. is that a part of Strahd? No, of Strahd. Well, that's not he, a possession. Because, <laughs> but it's like his DNA, though. <sighs> It's like that that vampire spawn is of Strahd. And I, realistically, you said, eh, okay. No, that's, I didn't we know. Didn't like on that <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Nate, Nate, can I point out that you have that sword that you got from the dungeon? Could that technically be a Strahd sword because it was in his castle? What? Remember Nate, sword? Yeah, like you remember you got that sword that like was sentient and you tried to give it to me and I'm like, I don't want this crap. That's we left that at the castle. Bruh, I forgot it? about that sword. <laughs> you left I never it? picked that up. Yeah. It just got thrown you... down the stairs. <laughs> yeah, because I gave it to you and you're like, I already have a sword. So like, yes, right, a sword that's I guess right we there. don't need that. Uh, <laughs> so technically. Technically, you passed it up to Ragnar. Ragnar tried to pass it up to Orden. And then right. Orden was like, no, I don't want that. I, mine's better. Well, and then well, Ragnar yeah. just threw it down to you on the stairs. Yeah. On the stairs? Oh, yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps if he's trying to do this, perhaps Irina could help. It's like, why Irina? Well, because she's got his DNA too. <laughs> Ew. Why are you gross today? <laughs> thousand, thousand year old jizz. No, I, I think he was talking about the spit he left in her neck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't watch that. Listen, Derek, right, at this that point, sounded I don't so care. much worse than what you actually meant. <laughs> I don't care if I have advantage or disadvantage. I just want this done. I want to stop talking about Strahd's so, DNA and liquid. So he, he, he's not we, gaining any benefit to wait because you have met him. He's so he's, he's right. got the Strahd yeah, 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 uh, puppet. Got, he's still got the puppet, so he'll have a minus two to his save. <laughs> Likeness or picture. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Did you say that he's never met him? Caraxes he's actually no, fought he, Strahd. Had, no, he has met Strahd, so okay. Strahd just hit a, a plus. To the... Okay, I yeah. I heard different. I um, thought you were saying that Nate doesn't get advantages because he hasn't met Strahd. No, he doesn't just didn't get any disadvantage for it. Yeah. Okay, so it'd be a minus two to a wisdom saving throw. What's his wisdom? Now, is that based off my save DC? Yes. Ooh. I think, I assume. See, I half wanted to let one of those vampire spawn go so I can have the vampire spawn DNA and then scry on the vampire spawn talking to Scry. It's okay. Yeah, I rolled killed. I rolled fucking terribly and I had a plus five. <laughs> oh <laughs> Ooh, gimme that strad. What what's time he doing, of, Derek? What time of day you know, it's about so it's a little after dinner now, I assume. Um so it's Roughly getting around closer to to dusk and, and nightfall, you uh -huh, you would yeah. you would see um, Strahd and Rahadin in in a very 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 pitch black dark room. Um, in okay. the middle of in the middle of this room, you see you would see um, a coffin. So you can obviously assume that this this the room that you're currently in now. Is where Strahd, is Strahd's bedchamber, his coffin chamber. 
Mm -hmm. um, you, you hear Strahd and Rahadeen having a conversation where Strahd is telling Rahadeen that um, to prepare all of our all of the defenses, our next our next encounter with this group will be will will be our final encounter with them. I am no longer playing games. They have they are no longer fun to me. They will all die. Go. Um, spread the word. Um, call all that that follow me to Castle Ravenloft. They when, when they come, they will face all of my wrath. Uh, Derek. Yo. So I'm in this room. Are there any windows in the room? No, it's pitch black. There's there's a door. <laughs> there's a door. Okay. And I can't like leave the room. You can only uh, with the scry can move with the target. You can stay within ten feet of the target. Mm -hmm. As so as he moves, you're you're always just going to be within ten feet of him. If he were um, how long can I do that? How long does this? Hold on. Ten uh, minutes. Ten minutes. Oof. Um. It's like it, it's ten minutes of, uh, of uh, not it's not a full ten minutes, but uh, of Strahd telling Rahadin to go, go, um, gather whatever, or have scouts have the have our people gather the remaining werewolves gather all of the vampire spawn in remaining in Barovia um, sure and... is a good thing that there aren't any werewolves left there's a couple that <laughs> didn't there's get like... back to the camp but not not a lot not as many as Strahd thinks there are <laughs> there's one who is not loyal to Strahd and a bunch of little kids Ooh, the young thing <laughs> there, there'll be some left but not all of them um and then Ray, I blame you if we get to Castle Ravenloft and we have to fight a bunch of child werewolves. <laughs> I blame you. <laughs> I'll take that blame. Um so Derek, there's a portion on the spell that says instead of targeting a creature, you can choose a location you have seen before as the target of the spell. When you do, the sensor appears at the location and does not move. Would I be able to look at Strahd's castle from the outside and see like what defenses are being put up in play? Would that automatically like you want to do that in the for the future, right? Uh yeah. Yeah, like when we when we start actually making our way that way, I'd like to get some type of insight and give me un momento. Yeah, yeah. I'll give I'll give you two mementos. I didn't tell you how many times you can scry, but there is a limit before something else happens, which I have to read. I have to find out. Uh, oh well, shit, Derek, you need to let me know. <laughs> I know I didn't. Because <laughs> you told me at will. You can do it at will. Yeah. Who's will? <laughs> hey Nate, sometimes you got to read the fine print, bud. Uh, no, about it. Correct. You already <laughs> agreed to the terms of service, so. What am I gonna do? Die? What are you gonna do? Stab okay. me moments you, before being stabbed? You you can mm -hmm. use it three times. Total? The, yeah, three times before the gift vanishes. Does he know this? No. Man, that's a bullshit <laughs> gift. <laughs> like you're 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 whispering permanently, but the the you can only use scrying three times. <laughs> How many times can you use cone of cold? That one I'm giving you that will permanent. The oh, other okay. one, it's the it's other one that you had the that you could only do a certain amount finger of times of, too. Oh, yeah, yeah the, the finger of death. of death. Yeah, you got to make a DC fifteen con save or die. I was I was thinking the dex ones. There's a dex one. Did yeah. you get a oh, dexterity yeah. one yeah, that you, you could only do you a told certain times? Yeah, you told no, you told me that that one I could do at will too. I just passed dexterity checks now. There dexterity was another save. one though that you only have the, for like three days. I was thinking the dex one. You only had like ten uses um, or something. You're the one that's supposed to be writing this down, Nathan. I thought it. I thought I got the important stuff. Okay. 
Let's see, let's see. Oh, back to the Amber Temple we go. <laughs> All the way down. I took read those ones and then F. That's E. There's F. Okay. So the finger of death one. After it has been used three times, the gift vanishes, and then he has to make a con save or of 15 or higher or die. Mm -hmm. Drop dropped to zero HP. Um, you took the ring of evasion one too, didn't you? Yes. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That's the you can't give a straight answer to any question put towards mm -hmm. um, That one lasts for 10 days. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so we got to get get on this project. But yeah, you 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 you've been traveling for probably two, so you've got like eight days remaining for okay. um, where you get the ring of evasion benefit left. Yeah, I definitely I'd like that. Okay. <laughs> sure. So yeah, I'd tell the party. Um, uh, he'd probably like go over to Rage in, like and him you mean, down. And to your knowledge, you don't know how many times you can use all these things or or how sure. long they last. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like we got all the information we can at the moment. Um, so he'd, like, beckon Rajin down, or if Rajin's not feeling correct since his bullshit, he'd beckon Orden down, and uh, <laughs> and he, he'd whisper to them, um, Strahd is, is planning all defenses of the castle. He knows we're coming, and it sounds like it's going to be a, a, I guess you could say a slugfest just to get through the front door. Um, scouts are about uh, keeping an eye out for us. If we go, we need to, we need to make it soon. Very well. We... Perhaps should ask see if there is an alternative way in. So how did are you saying this to the rest of the party too? Uh, yeah, anyone who anyone who could hear. How did Oodles find you guys? I assume he didn't go through the front door. Well, Oodles. he was a he was a goose most of the time. He flew in through the window. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't Vile. here for that. And we didn't Vile really reach. We didn't really have time to get a little story before he just disappeared again. Perhaps yeah, he got he, stuck he, as a mouse. He he could have had a rich tapestry of backstory that we just never got from him. <laughs> I'm sure he was just a snotty kid with the goose habit. Now that we can fly, do you think it's possible we can sneak in that way? It is. It's like you would remember that along the the backside where the, the where Castle Ravenloft sits on the face of, of a of a straight cliff. So it sits on the edge of the cliff, and at the bottom of the cliff is the uh, town of Barovia. So you, you remember looking up at the castle and seeing like a little, not opening in the walls, but a little lookout over the walls where Strahd could look down upon uh, Barovia. Um, I'll bring that up because me and Ragnar are probably the only ones who know since no one else has been to the village of Barovia. You and Ragnar would know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like you guys never went to the village of Barovia. Then that could be a way for us to get in. And given how soon we need to go, I don't think going back for Esmeralda is a good idea. I don't want anyone else's death on my conscience. Except what needs to be done. I think it's just us. Perhaps um, we can pick up supplies. Potions for Odin. You know, I'm not the only one who takes a beating. 
I imagine that the Mortikovs have some bottles and some water. Mm, that I'll could be it. very useful. Guys, I don't have ceremony ready yet. So we'd have to wait until tomorrow. How did you not keep it? Well, I never use it except for in this one circumstance. Oh, we're fixing to go fight Strahd. I'm pretty sure I probably won't need to make any holy water. Literally, you guys have not used any of the holy water I gave you. We used it to stop the floating skulls. No, you didn't. We were just like, oh, we could use that, and then we moved on. Pretty sure we, we, used, really... pretty sure we, we just... used them the second time. I don't think we did. I think we just beat them up and ran. I don't remember. <laughs> Kevin said in the recap that we did, so it's canon. Well... Okay. I didn't change my spell listing, so I'd have to take another Apparently. rest and then. Well, like, wait, that could work. Well, we're gonna have an hour. We're gonna have um, if it takes that long to get over there, it'll probably it'll probably take like a good four days, four or five days just to okay. get there. Okay, I can make all the holy water we need. Because you'll, I um, let me look at the map. You'll probably uh, have to stop. Uh, at least a, a, for a, a night somewhere before... How far away is Valaki from here? We can stop in Valaki. And Valaki is only six miles, so it would take you about two days to get to, to Castle Ravenloft from here. I've got nine, nine spell slots, and I need an hour each time, so I give me nine hours, and I can make nine um, holy waters. But could we possibly borrow a wagon from the Mardikovs just to make it a little faster? And just like so sit... delivery for them. To that. That's true. That's true. Maybe Caraxes can finally get some armor so he's not just running around in a loincloth. <laughs> I I would appreciate some type of coverage for my loins. Um yeah, uh haven't the Mardikovs already given you a wagon and you never brought it back. Yes we did. Oh you did? Okay. Yeah, we absolutely did. <laughs> no, we didn't no 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 no. What happened is that the Vistani gave us one and then we returned it. And then okay. we were like, right. Can we keep it? And they're like, No. Okay, yeah, that's right. So yeah, the Mardikovs would give you a, a allow you to use a, a wagon with, with with a horse drawn carriage for, for it. Yeah, obviously. So I imagine would... we were planning on stopping in the town anyways because yeah, we you, were going to pick up probably, supplies. Yeah. So yeah, you definitely you stopped that. for a night in Valaki if you were here, Nathan. Yeah, I was going to say you would know. Look, I'm not going to pee myself on stream yet. I'm I'm not make I'm not you that committed said just we yet. Could take a break because yeah, literally of us have to. Can take a break too. Nah, you guys can hold it. <laughs> um, Iris Ragnar, are there any supplies that you think you'll need when we go to Valaki? Maybe some new armor, new weapons. I think that we've got plenty of treasure. I think that we buy whatever will help us against Strahd. Whether That's it be armor, idea. weapons, potions, whatever they'll sell us. For sure, potions. Okay. And I say this is a good time to, to actually take a real break for everybody so I can figure out what the stores are going to have for you. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Shopping montage. Do they have the sword that we sold like several sessions ago to them? <laughs> All right, everybody, we'll be back in, what, about 10 minutes? Yep. That's enough time, Derek. All right, we'll be back in about 10 minutes to do a shopping montage and then go begin our uh, our uh, siege of Strahd's castle. This should be fun. We're very close to the end of this, this campaign, I think. So see you guys in about 10 minutes.
And we're back. Um, and Nate says he's ready and then disappears. But we are back for our shopping montage. So yeah, it takes you a day's worth of travel to get to, to over to Valaki. Um, it's relatively quiet on the way. You hear extra like rustling in the in the trees and the woods than you normally would, but you can just assume that it's definitely or it's probably um, the wildlife and and other creatures of the woods that are running and preparing for what's to come. Like the creatures of the woods know that. A, a, a fierce battle is going to come so they are all trying to get as far away from where you guys are as possible <laughs> um Barrett, could i um i probably would have asked before we left if the markovs have any empty bottles they'd give you three okay i'll spend three hours on the way there <laughs> making some <laughs> making some holy water they run a winery. They can't snare a little bit more. It's their livelihood, Ray. It all over <laughs> champagne. Do they have any yeah, because their livelihood would not be helped if they got rid of Strahd. Well, if, nobody, if we nobody, only... what, what, why should they believe that you're actually going to win? Nobody's ever defeated Strahd. They also owe us a debt they can never repay. Facts. Yeah, yeah and you said... Just give us some wine when we're, when we're done, and we'll be good. <laughs> okay. I don't know. They did hide well, the give dead, us some wine two now. dead bodies for us, so. Yeah. Well, that was part of the agreement before. <laughs> how, how much is some wine? Ray, I don't alter it further. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you'd get to Valaki. Um, Where do you head when you go to Valaki? Do you head to the inn? Do you, where, where, where do you head? Did we go see Derek? <laughs> I think uh, the inn is a safe bet, right? Is Probably. everybody just staying in town, knowing what's coming up? Like, I know this is not right at Strahd's Castle or anything, but... Well, they don't... They don't know anything yet, since word hasn't gotten to them yet. Because it ta it it you can get to Valaki before any or you can get to Valaki in only a day, so the word doesn't travel that fast. We should probably warn Erwin then, right? It, or maybe Father Lucian. Did you not I can... say Strahd has destroyed Kresk? He did. Didn't he, uh, did he attack Krez? Yeah, that's why I said he did. Yeah. I don't know if he'd attack Valaki unprovoked. Irina's not here, but I still think it's a good idea that we tell someone in town that has some kind of power just so they can keep the citizens safe. I can tell them all right now if you want me to. No, Ragnar, you do not have a certain grace that you need to deliver these kind of things. But I can tell everybody at once. Yes, and that would probably cause them to panic. That would keep them out of town? We want them to be in town. That's the safest place for them. Okay, so they can be in town when it's destroyed. That Yep, that makes sense. I don't think he's going to destroy the town. Why would he do that? We exactly. are here. Well, we won't be here for long. Do you, do you think we should camp outside of town tonight instead of staying at the inn? I don't think it matters all that much. Do we, I mean, is it is it dark here? Do we have a reason to stay in town instead of, like, getting trying to get what we need and then heading farther down the trail before we sleep? Are we just trying to stay here so we get a warm bed? Well, we came through here to do some shopping. 
well, yeah, I know that. But what I mean is, like, do we have a reason for doing our shopping and then, you know, taking a spa day at the end? Or not really. Know, should we just do our shopping and continue on down the road? I mean, you we're guys just, are all good. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have to take a a a, a day the day's rest somewhere, or you'll before you get to. Uh, I guess if you wanted, you could shop, take the whatever exhaustion it would take to get to the windmill and then rest. But if you don't take a rest soon or in Valaki, you will suffer a point of exhaustion. Um, I think it'd be yeah. worth it. How many, how many days has it been since we traveled? It takes probably a good a day, like a from 9 a.m. to probably about 3 or 4 just to get to Valaki. It takes a long couple few hours. Well, while we're here, I'm going to grab some studded leather. We'll, we'll get to that. So we'll that's that's what we're asking. We're getting to the point of oh, where you are okay. resting. For... Oh, that's good. Sorry, I jumped the gun. I think it'd be a good idea to go to the windmill and take the point of exhaustion just because it's very possible Strahd could attack the whole town. I mean, it's only a mile. Yeah, it's only. We could just fly mile. across. That's true. You could do that too. I forgot about that. You could just take off and fly. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's an option now. Where are you going to try to find your uh, equipment, your necessities? Are you going to the inn? You're going to the general store that was kind of rude to you guys and you hated him when you first rolled in? Or are you going to. Uh, Burgomaster, whatever his name is. Um, the wife is in jail, right? Because she, she tried to do an uprising. Uh -huh. She was in there with Oodles, and then Oodles escaped and left her there. Yeah, so? So, uh, uh, maybe not there, but we could go to the general store. Well, I mean, you, we have brought potions from here before as well. I think it's a good idea to talk to the Burgomeister anyways. Plus, Orden wants to tell them what's going on, just to be safe. Um, But I imagine we're going to need to go talk to the... I mean, we're going to need to check the general store. You know, if there's an armory, check the armory. You know, the blacksmith, whatever. There wasn't that. We discussed that last time. And you guys got pissed at me because there was no blacksmith <laughs> anywhere in Barovia. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> at least it's better than in Kresk where they didn't have anything. But, okay, so you um, you get to the general store to just start some shopping. Um, and you, you kind of see that they've stocked a little bit better than they had before. They currently have uh, five potions of greater healing, along with uh, another five potions of regular uh, regular healing. Um, they do have a, a nice purdy studded leather for, for us. But it's of dwarven fit, not gold. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like, what's that's the actual true. point of all this I, 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 <laughs> just to piss you off <laughs> for content we could probably bring that in a little bit uh, yeah it, they have some studded leather for, for, for Karaxis if you can afford it how and, much is the studded leather uh, Forty-five gold, so it'd be fifty gold. He's gonna ask fifty gold. Um, I don't have to fucking money. You're Ooh. fine. You're totally fine. Um, pretty sure between all of us, we have enough to cover whatever we need. I have yeah. six gold. Can Grass can Caractus ask him to sell it for? 20 gold and a tinderbox. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have 
um, 190 electron pieces, which is half of that. So 95 gold. Iris has 250 gold pieces, 900 silver pieces, 4,500 copper pieces, 30 gemstones worth 50 gold pieces each, 7 gemstones worth 100 gold pieces each. Should I continue? Brag about it, why don't you? <laughs> 12 pieces of plain gold jewelry worth 25 gold pieces each. I imagine this is like the situation in Skyrim where you just roll in and you have like way more stuff than they have <laughs> worth. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you can trade off some stuff uh get the po potions and the studded leather for for, for poor Carax is there since he's been searching all over barovia for it let this poor boy have you're, a tell shirt. you're telling me if i get studded leather my ac only goes up by one <laughs> yeah it's a 12 plus your dexterity and what the fuck is leather armor 11. 11 plus dex. <laughs> <laughs> what else do they have? Hey, no. think of it this way. Plate mail only gives a plus two. <laughs> plate mail is a solid 18, isn't it? Yeah, but yeah. like from what the starting AC armor is, is this generally a 15 or a 16. No, I mean, statistically, that's going to that's gonna be helpful. So I'm not super pissed about it. I was just hoping for like a seventeen, but you know, I wanted to be an arcane was or an arcane rogue, like a fucking dummy. Dude, I'm, gonna I'm, say, I'm done bitching. Um, I have chainmail and a shield, and I only have an eighteen. As you should. Yeah, and you're out here like I want to have one thing in a hey, seventeen. Hey, hey Ray, roll me a d100. Okay. Oh, that don't sound good, Derek. No, that sounds really good. Did we get any uh, of the other stuff never from mind. Ragnar's body? <laughs> there never wasn't really... mind. What do you mean? Like Ragnar had a ton of treasure. I'm pretty sure that you the, the only stuff you found on Ragnar's body the first time was his You didn't find anything on him the first time. You you got it from you got from Ragnar what was on uh Ersten's body. Oh, so and he has that, it. Was, that was his weapon. Just a, he only had his Ooh. weapon. Yeah, what I'm saying is when Ragnar died before, he had a crap ton of stuff on him. And I was wondering if we got any of that. I know we got like one or two things that Larenthar said he picked up, but if they didn't Larenthar pick it up. <laughs> if that's oh, the case, you ain't getting it. <laughs> that's probably what happened. Can we well, get if Larenthar Larenthar's body? got it, then it's somewhere in this town, probably, or likely. It got sold back to the place like it's a goodwill. <laughs> well they hung him they caught him and hung him so i'm like I know. they probably got they, his stuff correct yeah, they, they hanged him nope oh. nope they hung him derek um i was just thinking because he no, had people, people people get hanged he had two they elixirs of health he had three potions of healing <laughs> and he had a chain shirt Wait, did he ever get the um he got the cloak back, right? He got that off of Ursa. Yeah, we have the cloak. So I was just asking Derek if we were able to get any of that other stuff back. Like if somebody in the town has it and we could buy it back or whatever. Why do you need it? Uh three potions of healing, two elixirs of health. I don't know how much AC a chain shirt gets, but a chain shirt. A uh, chain shirt is um, for 13 plus 2. I would give Caraxes better better armor, right? He can't, he, rogues can't wear medium armor. Still That's a leather. good better. thing you wanted to be a rogue, huh? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, imagine that would, I imagine he'd have a disadvantage on his stealth also. Mm -hmm, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, not with yeah. a chain shirt. Really? Oh, so it's with a yeah. what with a scale? chain mail. Scale. Okay. But yeah, you you get your the the five potions of greater healing and the five potions of normal healing. You don't know where they came from. They just have them. So, 
that could be part of what was on Lothar's body. Um, I Derek, is I, there somebody writing those down? Um, nope. Nate, you should write that down because you're the fast one. You can well, the, sneak around. How, how many? Yeah, how many potions did you say? Five graders, five regulars. Well, we could just have one each because there's five characters, right? Yeah. There's only four of us. How much is a is a healing greater here healing? Four d four. Where a normal is two d four. And it's four d four plus four. Where a normal is two d four plus two. Mm -hmm. I tried seeing if Orden would find some, if they had plate mail, but they don't have plate mail for Orden. <laughs> um, can I look around for a better weapon? They have that sword that we pawned off. What was that sword? It was like an elven light sword. I think it was literally just a sword that Lorenthar <laughs> had or something that they sold. No, no, I'm talking about, remember Iris got me a, a great sword or whatever? Oh, I can't use great sword. No, we sold Orden's original sword because he wanted was, a great that's, sword. That's just a normal sword. It just had an elven uh, hit, mm. hit to it. Mm. Be, for so there, there's no quality blacksmiths in this town? No. <laughs> well, there's two now that Iris yeah. and Ragnar are here. So Everything is made of <laughs> wood and string in this town, Nate, because yeah. they don't have a blacksmith. There's no iron oh. used at all nope. in this town. I I actually need a new string, so I'm a, oh, I'm, a right. top, I'm a top off my string. That'll be one copper piece. <laughs> Ooh, that's deep. Ooh, I give you uh, half a copper piece. You can cut that in half. <laughs> Forge clear. Two stand. string, one copper piece. Final offer. Three copper pieces, two string. Take it or leave it. I don't need no fucking strength. <laughs> <laughs> and then I turn back and then I turn back to Ord and be like, watch him beg. <laughs> Can I buy some empty bottles off this guy? Three more bottles. <laughs> How much? I don't know, probably a copper a piece. I don't fucking know. Um, I will lean in. How much for that string? <laughs> An extra copper. <laughs> Done. And I will pass the cop the copper piece to him, and then hand Caraxes the string. See, just just like I told you. I no, no, it's just like I told you. <laughs> just like I told you. You gotta you gotta know how to deal with these kind of guys. They're a mm -hmm. bunch of scum. <laughs> oh, I know. I know how bartering works. <laughs> Almost as bad as cart salesmen. Oh, they're the worst. They're like they're vampires. The they're yeah. worse than vampires. Having <laughs> fought vampires, they're worse. <laughs> yeah, Corexus would just be going around trying to like trade his random shit for better <laughs> shit. Like, I got this hammer here, but he's like, he's so creepy when he does it. He's yeah, like, he's got that hey. smile. <laughs> hey, I got this hammer here. You want to trade a couple arrows for this hammer? <laughs> Brand new, never been used. Okay, been used a little bit. <laughs> Is there anything Looking else for back from New York? He's just got his, he's got his new leather armor, and it's got like clasps on it, so he keeps on doing it and just opening it up. You want to buy a hammer? <laughs> Hey, <laughs> fresh candles right here. You want a crowbar? I know you need a crowbar. <laughs> you want some lint? I got lint. <laughs> Best lint this side of the Mississippi. I tell you that fucking much. This is why y'all said we were pocket, gonna. Honestly. This is why y'all said we were gonna finish the campaign this session, huh? <laughs> Shopping montage, bro. <laughs> Okay, for like the third time, do they have anything else for sale? No, no, just normal adventuring equipment. <laughs> um, I will. How much for some rope? I don't know. You can have rope. 
you have enough. You don't have afford, rope. You have enough to afford rope. You can have some rope. Okay. <laughs> We're probably not ever gonna come back to this oh, shop God, again. No, there's no chance you spend all your money. <laughs> I don't know. I would I like to spend all of my money on as many beneficial things as possible, Derek. Yeah. How many things do I get? You you can have a six thousand miles of string for all your gold. <laughs> <laughs> don't need it. Don't need it. I'm not lost. Watch him beg. Um, <laughs> Watch him beg. <laughs> Here's a question. We talked. To, we we were planning to talk to the Burgermeister. Um, did he mention anything that was up in the attic that our characters don't know about, but our players know about? Of the Burgermeister Mansion, since we are, since we were supposed to talk to him and ask him for help, anyways. Well, we're just we... gonna tell him and, and warn him that a fight's gonna go down at Trod's Castle. Be ready Why... in case something happens. <laughs> Why don't we just role play that out, just so we don't have to ask Derek and he has no clue what we're talking about? It gives Derek time to read. Yeah, exactly. No, no. I mean, we're gonna be role playing with someone that Derek's. God. He's already that read this chapter. I mean, I'm cool with it. I just felt yeah, I, I initially thought we were uh, gonna kind of skip all of this and kind of get through it quickly, but you know, yeah. that's what <laughs> I get for thinking. To, I'm trying to move it along. You've got your shopping done. You got all this done. Are you leaving now? <laughs> okay, okay. So you're saying no we to telling gonna... us what was in the attic? Yes. So, real quick, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Do we have any other allies <laughs> to fight Strahd, or is it just this ragtag group? Well, the thing is that we were talking about that, and then we were like, I don't think we have enough time. Yeah, no, we don't have time. Let's just go fuck them up. Yeah, because we were talking about Esmeralda, because she's pretty much our only like, ally. Like, like you know, uh, Since you know that Strahd is sending out for reinforcements... The longer you take, the more people I'm gonna throw in. <laughs> yeah, let's just let's just run it. Let's just Leroy Jenkins it. And what were you wanting in the Burgomaster's mansion? Whatever was in the attic. I don't. We never went up there, so I don't know what was in there. I was oh. just wondering if, when we talked to him, because I figured we'd mention like, hey, you know, is there any anything you could suggest where we could look for help? Because we're gonna go face Strahd. If he mentioned whatever was up there, because I don't know what was up there. Can I also point out that if we're going to the windmill, we still have that mirror. I was going to wait till we got to the windmill to bring that up, right? You got it. Okay. So, yes, you get you, you fly to your windmill. You're, you can now rest for the night. What are you doing at the windmill? Can I recite? the stuff that was on the enchantment for the mirror and get the assassin to come out uh where exactly was the mirror originally because i can't remember because to look up what happened it was Wait, in the burgomeister mansion okay. yep i've got it so you recite magic mirror on the wall summon forth your shade blah 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 <laughs> okay uh so yes, you see a like a spectral assassin come out of the mirror, and it just looks at you. Um, the, the, this spirit of it appears as a darkly handsome thirty-year-old man with bloodshot eyes. It just shows up, doesn't say anything. It can't, it can't speak. <laughs> okay. Um. I will refrain from pulling out the Strahd puppet for show and tell example of who he wants him to kill and just um, start describing Strahd. We need you to kill Strahd Van whatever his name is. That's your task. You said you're commanding him to kill Strahd? Yes. It vanishes. Good, good job. So dead. Fun. Game's over. We're good. I told y'all this would be the end. There we go. See, and they say this campaign's hard. Nate, 
Or we could have Crox- done that like 5,000 sessions ago and been done. <laughs> Croxus, why don't you look and see what's going on there? Just make sure it's been done. Ragnar just struts what's downstairs. And well, he's I like, do- that's done. We're finished. Rod's dead. <laughs> I took care of him. <laughs> Correct. What can you can you see what he's talking about? Can't give a straight answer. That's a that's a direct question. <laughs> he says, hmm, perhaps. And then he sits down and he's going to scry on Strahd because, like, eh, why the fuck not? Uh, it's a wisdom save. Feels a plus five. It does not work. <laughs> well, doesn't it, doesn't it happen he, still? Um, he's aware, right, that it happens. Yeah. Oh God! On a successful t- save, the target isn't affected, and you can't use the spell against it again for twenty-four hours. Uh, if he, if he wants you to fail, he can automatically fail and know it's there. But on a success on the save, it, the target's not affected by the scry. Um, Caractus would he'd sit down and he'd get in like a like an Avatar: The Last Airbender kind of position, right? And then he'll like mumble some like a. Uh, 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 you know, speak in tongues kind of kind of feel. His eyes would glow up, and then it would stop, and he says, I don't know. <laughs> hey, crack, Craxus, make a wisdom save. Oh, no. Um, it's okay, because I just read a book on wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> I read uh, Marcus Aurelius, and I'm fucking I'm good now. Nope. Plus four. I am not. Oh, that's, that's an eight. That's a, at yeah. most an eight, Derek. Would that you, you uh? Read, you read the Carry On Camping, Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was just Spark Notes. <laughs> it, it, it was a, it was actually Marquise Aurelio. <laughs> hey, I know that question. guy from the trailer park. Carry on. <laughs> right. Oh, just carry on. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he would say um. He may or may not be dead. That is what I mean. Well, okay. We go get the skull and we're done. That's it. Simple as that. We can walk right in, really. I don't think we should just walk right in. I think we should still fly because even if Strahd's dead, the people who follow him are not. But if Strahd's dead, then who are they following? Um... Maybe they just want to get rid of us. Why? Because we just killed Strahd. What do they care? Their boss is dead. <laughs> Look, what if someone killed Rajin? Wouldn't you want to kill whoever that was? My boss is dead. What am I supposed to do? I gotta go home now. <laughs> well, I thought that you were besides, besides, that's not fair because no one can kill Rajin. <laughs> Like that's just that's just I I listen, Orden, I'm sorry to say it so bluntly, but that may or may not be a really dumb thing to say. Because Ragin can't die. I'm just gonna look at Ragin. Ragin can't even hear it because Craxis is whispering. <laughs> yeah, he's whispering just to you. He's like, I've seen almost everyone here. Almost die, but not right in. Why does Caraxes have this mic, whatever voice? Because, <laughs> like, this is I'm trying to figure out his whispering, and this is just what it ended up like, being. Hey, yo, <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, I, I had a very Trump feeling from that. <laughs> He's Ragin. the best. Ragin's the best Ragin master in the world. Will not die. He's the greatest <laughs> master you've ever seen. Mark, I said, I said greatest. I did not have sex with Rage and Sora. <laughs> All right, Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, howdy. Um, Are we going to well, fight Strahd tonight? Or? 
<laughs> We're not fighting Strahd, bro. No. <laughs> Orden's gonna go make wine, and Craxus is just gonna <laughs> fucking follow Ragin around while he yeah. murders everything in the world. <laughs> and it's, uh, it'll probably take another, I think, wasn't it another day and a half worth of travel just to get to back to Barovia from the windmill, I believe? Day and a half, yeah. I'm, I'm still so good on my time. Well, now. Well, is, who was saying that they needed to get off? Oh, I do. Yeah, I was going to say, Kevin needs to go. Yeah. Um, I, I am in Cyprus next Wednesday. I will have my laptop, but I do not know what I will be doing um, at game time. Especially how I think Cyprus is like three, four hours ahead of like my time, which would make it what nine hours ahead of you guys. Um, it's just basically the next day. Yeah, it, that would be fun. I wake up at seven o'clock in the morning and you, we're ready to play. Um, yeah, we'd be starting at like um, two thirty in the morning for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh, I would say if you want to play next week and do the journey, get to Barovia, and then <coughs> that would take gonna... five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say we need you there. We'll figure out what we're gonna do. We can find That's something sweet. to do. Yeah, we can yeah, play, like... play. We can play like a another game of some sort. <laughs> I mean, play <laughs> with her one shot. Oh, who said that? That's a great no, idea. No, no, we can play something else, like Among Us or something. Oh, I, I don't know if I can run among us on this on this Chromebook. I can't True. possibly make another character, so exactly. I just can't be bothered. You guys are never gonna let me do my one shot, are you? Listen, no, Ray, we'll I'm waiting for you. I'm all in on it. Nate's the only <laughs> one that's gonna be there. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm down for Ray's one shot. I just gotta make a character. Mm-hmm. Yarl doesn't what, approve what, of, what among, of Among Us. He just wants. Uh, what's the other oh, one? Duck, can, duck, can Yarl play Among Us with duck, us? Duck, Goose, or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Why is you, Yarl sliding wait, into Derek's hey, DMs? Nathan, Nathan, couldn't you play Among, us, play Among us on your phone? I could, but that's lame. No, it's not. It's the, pretty much the same. I've played on my phone before. It's not too bad. How can you not run Among Us? It's like five gigs. Like five micro gigs. He's, he's like, got a MacBook. <laughs> no, no, I have a Chromebook. It's like six gigs, and half of that's taken up by the processor, or by by, by the installed software. So y'all made Kevin quit. Yeah, sorry, Kev. Yeah, he said, "Fuck it." He was like, "Okay, this conversation's not going anywhere." Bye. We'll no, figure I'm it down out. for Among Us, though. So we'll figure it out. Do we have any reason, like, why we don't just start next week? Um there i mean like start because, Pro, yeah we could because well, kevin's if, not gonna well, be we'll, with us we'll, yeah we'll start the next game with, with the next time i mean not next week we'll that's what i meant the next game okay yeah do we have i was just i meant next next game do we have a reason why like unless i mean unless derek wants to roll random encounters do we have a reason why we can't just try to have like an epic game next game mm-hmm. yep every game we play is epic with another word at the end, but you know. But failure. <laughs> yeah, ex- exactly. But for next week, should well, I guess we can decide what we're doing once you end your stream. Yeah, we'll talk about it um, off stream and figure it out, and decide and um, other words while I vamp to anybody. Got anything they want to plug or say or anything while I'm doing Nate. stuff? Nate does. I I do. Um, so today I dropped a brand new episode of the Viva La Vega podcast, and it is with our very own Nate and Ray. Um, it is a episode, or it's like a it's the first half of a two part episode because our conversation went on a little long. But we're talking about um, a uh, 
an article that we've read that is pretty much bringing back the the new age of satanic panic in reference to role playing games. So we have a really cool discussion about that, and then Nate and Ray and I have a conversation about how we grew up in religious and non religious households. Uh, so it's a really cool conversation. I really enjoyed it. Um, and Nate and Ray are fantastic guests, very interactive, and they have fantastic stories, uh, especially in reference to how they grew up uh, in their household and compared to mine, which is completely different. And it's, it's really interesting conversation. So if you want to check that out, I believe Nate has a thing on there. Uh, yep, Nate's a great dude, and the conversations with him are great. He picks great guests that bring so much to the table. And you can check me out at the Viva La Vega podcast on Spotify. I think I'm on Apple Podcasts as well, and Anchor, which is kind of where I upload from. But Anchor is owned by Spotify. Anyway, that's kind of how it works. Um, I got a few other, I mean, I'm scheduled out for the next month or so on episodes. So we got we got lots of cool stuff going. And I have, one, I have one more question for y'all pertaining Strahd before we leave. For y'all? Yeah, he's in the chat. For y'all, as in oh. you all. Um, your night at the windmill, getting rested up. Derp! It's the derp! <laughs> She's here! <laughs> what are your conversations like for like the next 10 minutes? Um, if we have any kind of paper, I will absolutely suggest that we write like letters to our families just in case we don't make it. Who's going to deliver them? They can't get out. <laughs> well, like, what if one of us dies and the others live? Then they can like take it outside. More along the lines of, do you, like, in during the next 10 minutes do you, in the windmill, do you mention anything about your plan? on how to get to Strahd? Uh, probably not. I kind of imagine that the... Oh, he probably I feel like a conversation it's, it's... where because, I was like, yeah. you need to sneak Cause in. Because when, when, cause when Nate tried to scry on Strahd, mm -hmm. Strahd sees, felt it and in, ten, in turn is scrying on you right now. <laughs> yeah, and, and Caraxus literally would not have put two and two together, so he wouldn't have said anything like, oh, I think he's, like, that's what I thought he was doing as a player, but as Caraxus, he wouldn't, he wouldn't think that's what was going on. So yeah, do you, like, do you mention the plan at all to, for Strahd to have a bigger... I mean, we don't even have a plan. No, we don't. No, it's... <laughs> We've... We well, just know, know we're gonna you go know and you're, fuck you're them up. Flying up, but do you mention anything about flying up from eh, Barovia? <laughs> we have a really excited one. I think we've already talked about that, so I doubt it. Oh, I yeah. imagine at least for Ragnar and Iris's point, it's kind. Of, we're pretty quiet. Like we're we've been in this place for a while now, and all of us have been through a lot, especially Iris and Ragnar. So I'm imagining you know, just everything's starting to settle in and become real at this point. Okay. And they're, so all he knows they're is pretty you're, quiet. You'll, you'll, you'll be there probably tomorrow. Or the next day, I mean. You should message Kevin and ask him as well, just to make sure. Yeah. But I feel like Kevin's character is smarter than that. Like, he's a technician. Yeah, but uh, maybe that, maybe, maybe that'll be his down downfall. You, you don't know you're, you're being scried on. <laughs> I don't okay. think. Yeah, I don't think any of us said, but ask. I'd ask Kevin just to make sure for that okay. reason. And then, I mean, if he says if he says he would be talking plans with us, then obviously the others would. But as for just Iris and Ragnar, who I can speak for, they're they're pretty quiet unless somebody's mm -hmm. talking otherwise. Yeah. Correct. It's like talking to most people. I mean, Strahd knows we're coming, so I imagine, you know, we're talking about feelings and stuff like that, but... Yeah. We're just sharing our emotions. We're having a therapy session. <laughs> Strahd's listening in, and he's like, oh, this is so gay. I can't. 
I can't hold on, do it. Hold on, hold on. Guys, guys, guys. What, your shirt? Sounds gay, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, really, Sean's like super intent. Like, oh, this is so queer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, Strahd's into that. He words. does have a husband. He does have a husband. And oh, well, wives. that's good that he has a husband for uh, for Pride Month. It's not Pride Month that's anymore. That was two months ago. All right. You know, Ray, just because you don't think it's Pride Month doesn't mean it's not in Pride Month in here. Okay? So I need you to, like, chill with the bigotry. I'm sorry for being homophobic. You, you really are. It's super insulting. <laughs> okay. You can end. <laughs> I mean, we might as well keep going with the train wreck at this point. <laughs> it's got too much hey inertia guys, to stop now. It can't stop. Look at how stopped. cute my dog is. Isn't this distracting? <laughs> Yarl says, you know what, Ray? We are proud every month. Yeah, come on. <laughs> oh, my headphones fell off. <laughs> All right. Um, we are going to, uh, you know, y'all bullshitted long enough for me to get a raid ready we're gonna raid um yarl dm simply because jeremy's over there um doing oh, his shit, spirit God yeah. dms right now so they're talking about talking talk, well it's not his channel he's on somebody else's channel but um they do this on wednesday nights and we're gonna jump over there and raid them while they talk about how to be a better dm um if you guys want to hang out after the end screens up for just a minute or two we'll hop over and do that raid and you'll get extra channel points because we'll have Pokemon uh, Chat versus Streamer coming again very soon. So save up them points. Except you, Jarl. You don't get points anymore. Not after the incident. Yeah, not after the incident. We'll see you all in another dimension. <laughs>